Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer. Welcome to Medicine Matters. The topic, ACIP's 2024 Adult Immunization Schedule. Highlights of what's new. Here's why it matters. Each year, ACIP revamps and updates its immunization schedules. There's a schedule for children and adolescents. There's a separate schedule for adults, which is the focus of this segment. The biggest change for 2024 is the new schedules available right now in 2023. It's not embargoed, it went live early, so you don't need to wait till January 2024 for these schedules to go into effect. You can use them now. Both schedules were published and became available in November. They became effective immediately and included ACIP recommendations approved by the CDC director through October 2023. Subsequent recommendations before the 2025 schedule comes out will be added to the addendum, a new step five, section five of the schedule. The addendum closes a loophole, which should make ACA compliant insurance plans cover ACIP recommended immunizations sooner. Here's what else is new. More vaccines with new recommendations and new color code keys for the schedule's vaccine tables. The newest vaccine additions to the schedule include RSV vaccines, the MPOX vaccines, and a new MEN ACWY MEN B combo vaccine, and of course, the new 2023 2024 formulation of the COVID vaccine. Both mRNA and protein based adjuvanted versions are included. All are showcased on the cover page in alphabetical order by name with abbreviations and trade names. They're also detailed in the vaccine-specific Step 3 notes section, which is also organized alphabetically. The tables have the same titles. Step 1 is Table 1, Vaccinations by Age. Step 2 is Table 2, Vaccinations by Medical Conditions and or other indications. Although the table names haven't changed, their color code legends have been adjusted and refined. And the legends for some of the same colors are not the same for both tables, which is a little bit confusing. The color purple has a different meaning on table one than on table two. The order of the conditions covered in the columns on table two have been switched up. The same headings are there as in 2023, but they've been reorganized. And even for vaccine recommendations, which have not changed, the color code keys reflecting the recommendations have. This is why the 2024 version of Table 2 looks very different than it did in 2023. The 2024 revision of Table 2 looks sleek, but stark as compared to previous Table 2 versions. Much of the wording on overlays has been removed, which means you have to rely more heavily on the notes. I have to say, I sort of miss having those details on the overlays. A new color, brown, has been introduced on Table 2 to spotlight groups and conditions that require recurrent revaccination. PDAP in each and every pregnancy at 27 to 36 weeks. Revaccination with men ACWY every five years for people living with HIV. Revaccination of those with asplenia and or complement deficiency with both men ACWY every five years and men B every two to three years. Stem cell transplant recipients need three doses of Hib. Vaccine order is the same on both tables. The rows for COVID and flu vaccine are at the top of both tables. They're coded yellow, meaning everyone needs a dose of both vaccines. Both tables also have two new rows, a new row for RSV vaccines and a new row for MPOX vaccines. The notes have been edited for clarity and reveal who needs what and when and include vaccine-specific sections for special circumstances. The COVID vaccine note embraces the updated 2023-2024 formula. Everyone six months and older needs a dose of the updated COVID vaccine. Specifics of who needs what and when depends on what they've already received as well as their immune status. Detailed recommendations for both mRNA and protein-based adjuvanted versions are included in the notes. The notes also give vital details about RSV vaccines for pregnant people and for older adults. There are two RSV vaccines. Both are pre-F RSV vaccines. They're identified by trade names for clarity, 
a Rexby contains an adjuvant, a Breezebo does not. The RSV vaccine note explains only a Breezebo, that's the one without the adjuvant, can be given to pregnant people only at 32 to 36 weeks and only to those whose baby would be born during RSV season. For adults 60 and older, ACIP recommends a dose of either vaccine under shared clinical decision-making, meaning you and your patient have to discuss and decide. The notes also link to additional guidance for making that decision. For the MPOX vaccine, all adults in any age group at increased risk of getting MPOX should get a two-dose series of the vaccine. The MPOX vaccine notes include a list of MPOX risk factors. The schedule's a great resource for figuring out which vaccines your patients need. It also has a treasure trove of helpful links to useful information, vaccine information statements, complete ACIP recommendations, CDC's general best practice guidelines for immunizations. There's a link to VAERS, CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, if you need to report an adverse event. A new additional information section in the notes links to travel vaccination requirements, as well as best practices guidelines for vaccinating those with immunodeficiency. There's also a link to the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program for resolving any vaccine injury claims. CDC tries to make it as easy as possible to get the information you need to make sure your patients get the vaccines they need. There's a link to download CDC's vaccine app. The schedule even has a QR code on the cover page to make it easy to access the schedule online. With all these tools literally at your fingertips, there's no reason not to know which vaccines your patients need and when. The challenge now is making it happen, getting those needed vaccines into arms. For Medicine Matters, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer.